G'day viewers and welcome to another episode of Project XB where we'll be looking at, well, absolutely nothing because we can't get anywhere near the vehicle because we are in lockdown. Even further to that, I am in isolation. The reason being is I was lucky enough to visit a tier one exposure site. So that's absolutely fantastic as well. Luckily, everything's negative and we're looking good. It just means that I can't get anywhere near the Falcon. However, before we were locked down and I was placed in isolation, what I was able to do was take a few photos and a few um, shots around what we've actually done to the Falcon since the last video was published. I've also got information so that we can answer a few questions on how we mounted the Astra Power steering pump behind the front guard. So I've got a little bit of uh, footage for that for the people that are interested there. The other thing that we'll do as well is I'll show you how I was going to wire up our AU thermo fan so that they're thermo switching. So I've got a bit of a wiring diagram and how we are going to attack that. Usually the way that I like to do it is I like to be able to show you how I've done something and then show you the end result in terms of how it works. Unfortunately, we're unable to get the thermo switch um, tigged into the radiator so we're gonna have to wait until we come out of lockdown for that um, but as soon as that happens then we'll be able to place all of that in bleed up the cooling system and then we should be good to almost start the vehicle so let's go and have a look at a few of these things shall we so first up we'll have a look at what's actually changed since we've looked at the vehicle last Apologies for the audio quality in the intro, but you do what you can when you're in isolation. Anyway, looking at this now, what we've got is we've got our fuel filler and also our fuel tank fitted to the vehicle, which was a hell of a lot of fun trying to fit that by myself without damaging anything, but we were able to do that quite successfully. The other part that we've done is we've gone and fitted the radiator hoses and the radiator mounts as well, and also cleaned up the wiring, so clipped all of that back where it should be and routed the harness correctly. Looking on the inside now, you can see that we've gone and fitted our dummy radio fascia. So we've got our 8-track radio fascia in front of our Bluetooth stereo that we've got fitted to the vehicle. We've also fitted all the gauges and you can see that the 12-volt gauge is actually working. That was a bit of a mission to get that one working. Um, those old gauges, they need a little bit of loving every now and again just to get those working. But we managed to get that all happening, so looking good there as well. Looking at our thermo fans now, one thing that I should explain is that I want this to be a fully automatic sort of setup. So I need to make them thermo switching rather than having a switch on the dash which I can flick on and flick off. So to do this, what we've got is a couple of tangs that need to be tigged onto our PWR radiator to mount our AU thermo fans. We also need to raid pick apart and what we need to do there is we need to get a plug off a E36 BMW. So on the 1.8 litres, they have got the exact type of thermo switch that we need. So those will provide ground at 80 degrees and 88 degrees. We definitely need the plug because you cannot buy that plug commercially, believe it or not. You can actually buy the sensor and that is a Trident sensor that you can get, or you can actually wrap one out of a BMW check to see if it works and bang that in and go your hardest. However, you do need to make sure that it is the 80 and 88 degree one, not the 91 and 99 degree one that you can also get on the same vehicle. So you need to be careful, otherwise you have the potential of cooking your engine. Anyway, I digress. Let's have a look at some of the other bits and pieces that we need. So the first thing that we are going to be requiring are a set of two normally open relays so we spoke about how relays worked in our last video so hopefully that made a little bit of sense and if it did then this one will make sense as well so along with those two normally open relays we also need this guy which is a switching relay also known as a changeover relay and that is a five pin i've already spoken about this but this is our uh, switch or thermo switch or thermo sensor whatever you want to call it um, and what this will actually do is it will provide ground 
at two different temperatures. So the first ground will get continuity to ground at 80 degrees. You will also get continuity to ground at 88 degrees as well, and that will provide a second ground. So it will allow us with those three relays for the circuit to operate as follows. However, before we go into that, we should make mention of where we're going to mount this particular sensor. This sensor belongs on the cold side of the radiator. We could put it on the hot side, and all that's going to mean is that as soon as the thermostat opens on our engine, it's going to provide hot water going straight into the radiator, and it's going to make the fans go on full bore the whole time. Not really ideal, and that's not the way that the OEM about engineering it. The things that I try to do whenever I make a modification on a vehicle is if it has been done before, such as the power steering pump, I always try my best to make sure that it is engineered the same way that the OEM intended, as best as possible. So, what I've done is I have actually gone and got a aluminium bung that you can weld in with the correct thread or the sensor. And what we've done is we've put that on the cold side of the radiator. So it is below the lower radiator hose. And what that will do is it will tell us what the efficiency of that radiator is. So when we're cruising along and the coolant is now at 80 degrees after going through the radiator, it will put the fans on at a slow speed. And then when it gets up to 88 degrees, it will put the fans on at high speed. So let's see how it actually goes about doing it. When we've got our ignition on, it provides power to the top of each of those relays. However, we've got no ground path for our electromagnets, so nothing's gonna occur. When we get up to 80 degrees, it's gonna allow continuity to ground on the low side. So let's have a look and see what happens there. First of all, it energizes relay fan one, allows the current and voltage to go through cooling fan motor on the left-hand side, go through the switching relay down through onto the right-hand side and provide six volts there. Let's see what happens when we get to 88 degrees now. So we already know that on the low side, it's going to be allowing the voltage and current to flow like so. However, once we get to 88 degrees, we've now got a secondary ground. And what that does is it allows the energization of cooling fan relay number three, which is going to allow a path straight to ground. So therefore, instead of it sharing that 12 volts with the right hand motor, the cooling fan motor is operating on 12 volts, so it will be spinning quite quickly. You can see at this point over here as well that we've got a path that allows ground to go and operate cooling fan relay number two. What that does is it will flick the switchover relay and provide 12 volts to the cooling fan motor on the right hand side providing that with 12 volts. So now the motors are wired in parallel, so the fans will be spinning at high speed. And hopefully that should be enough to keep a 351 Cleveland with relatively high compression ratio within the normal operating range. Okay, hopefully this footage will answer a few questions that some of you had on how we actually managed to mount our Astro Power steering pump behind the front guard. So the way that we did it was we utilized the original Astro Power steering pump bracket. Um, the reason for that is it's got the rubber mounts to eliminate any NVH concerns that we may have if it was solidly mounted. And you can see that it is mounted in three separate spots. So what we've got there is a couple of M8 nut certs, one in the sill, and one behind it that you can barely see going into the A-pillar itself. So the one that's in the sill is actually sitting on a spacer to bring it up a little bit. The other part of it is a strap that goes between the power steering pump bracket to the flange where the inner mudguard splash shield sits. 
and out the back we've got another M8 bolt that goes through another strap that picks up the Astra power steering pump bracket and the A pillar itself. Hopefully that answers any questions that you may have on how we've gone about mounting it. We've kept it incredibly level so you can see the fluid just in the reservoir and you can see that that is not sitting over one side or the other. It is dead level so we'll be able to check our levels whenever we need to and it is right on the dipstick. We're able to bleed up the system and the power assist is working perfectly. If you have any other questions on how we mounted this or any other questions on any of the systems that we've covered so far in general, be sure to put them in the comments and we'll do our best to get to them if and when we can. So there you have it. That's uh, where we're up to. Hopefully we've been able to answer a few of your questions. You're able to see exactly where we're up to and what's next for the vehicle. And hopefully we haven't upset too many school teachers in making this a very hodgepodge type arrangement where we don't have one idea and expand on it. It's just many, many components. Anyway, stay safe and look after yourselves and hopefully we'll see you very shortly on the next episode when we're actually able to work on the Falcon again. And if you liked this episode, and I'm not too sure why you would, but anyway, if you did, please like, share and subscribe.